Watch this video for easy steps to make your own tufted headboard. I'll be listing everything I used in the description box below, so do not forget to check it out. I used two pegboards and I had them laid side by side. I used pegboards over plywood as it would help me mark out the points for the buttons as you later see. Plywood is a lot harder to map out. I then laid one by twos on all four corners of the pegboards and then I noticed that I had cut one at Home Depot a lot longer than it should actually be. They are usually able to cut everything you need to size at the store where you buy your materials. I'm using a miter saw here. It's one of the, I'd say, easiest ways to have small cuts instead of using a heavy duty machine. However, it's very strenuous. So if you're not ready to do all of this, you probably need to go back to the store with the right dimensions. Here I use liquid nails on the 1x2s for all the four sides. You need to place something heavy on them so it can dry and um, glue properly. You could also use clamps. I could not find my clamp at this time so I had to use, um, I think I used a dumbbell. I can't even remember what I used here. Just to let you know, these 1x2s, I actually used them to secure my nail heads. The decorative nails I used in the end, these 1x2s um, helped to receive the nail heads better. Here is where I start to mark out the points where the tufting goes i tried to space out every i think eight holes i was going for the diamond tufted look which is why you see me going all over the place but for if you want the square tufting I think it's a lot more straightforward because you're just going to the left or to the right. You're not taking any diagonal lines across. You might want to take your time to do this very well because this process will either make or mar the end result of your tufting after you add the fabric.
if you're still here it's obvious you are enjoying the video so do not hesitate to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe share leave a comment and let me know what you think so at this point i marked out the same pattern i have on my pegboard directly on my foam i used four inch foams the thicker your foam the more mm, i'd say defined your tufting will look after you add your fabric so i used four inch foams which is very thick and then i used a uh, mm, i think these are called steak knives i used a steak knife to put a hole through all of the um points i had marked i think some people use fancy machines but i didn't have any of that so yeah use what you have to get what you need and what you want however it said i think this was the third or fourth day and my daughter who's the my client could not wait and she was getting on my last nerves <laughs> but yeah clients can be like that sometimes at this point I was ready to complete the project already so this is um, where you place your batten you place the batten over the foam I forgot to mention that to attach the foam to the pegboard you use spray glue so I use this fabric spray glue which I'll link in the description box below this adheres the foam to the pegboard and also helps to adhere the batten to the foam I had to do that for extra security you pull and stretch the Pattern over the pegboard and staple with a staple gun in the back. I marked the same points on the back of the pegboard. This would help me when I am um, threading and putting my buttons through. You have to secure as tightly as possible so it doesn't get um, so it doesn't unravel after a while. I'm not sure how many yards I got, but I believe it must have been about five, which is double the length of what I actually needed. Because when you pull in the process of tufting, you are going to be in need of extra fabric, which is why you need a more fabric than the actual dimensions you're working with I would recommend that for every button you put through a hole make sure you pull the thread very well to secure the button so it doesn't unravel after a while I will show you how I did that. At this point, my fingers were already sore, so I had to put on my work gloves to give me like an extra buffer and extra protection from the harshness of the staple gun.
here I used two eight inch needles. I poked one through the hole in the back. This guided me to know where I'd poke the needle that holds the bottom through. I already have the points marked in the back so I knew where to put the needle through in the back but because the fabric had covered the points in the front there was no way to know where those holes or where those points were so I had to put a needle through the back first to guide me to the front to poke the needle from the front to the back I don't know if that makes any sense but yeah that's what I did by pulling the pattern of the diamond tufting is beginning to reveal itself and um, yeah So you go on with the same steps for all the buttons until you've added like 40 buttons. I think I used like 40 buttons, I'm not sure but I think it was about that number. I had I think 8 columns and 5 rows which is about 40 so I guess about 40 or more, who knows, just counting. <laughs> I had worked later than usual this day and I knew I needed a break. So last day of the project, I just put all the buttons at once and then started to pull them. Cause I thought it took longer than usual to put them one at a time. So I just placed all of them and then started to pull and secure in the back. I can't overemphasize how important it is to secure the thread. If you don't secure the thread, the buttons will unravel after a while. So do not forget to pull that thread and staple it with all your power and might. <laughs>
to staple the fabric you pull whatever is left on the sides after tucked in because with the tucked in you have already pulled most of it through like the bottom holes so what you have you staple to all the sides and then the corners it's very important for you to smoothen it out so it doesn't bulk because if it bulks it will be very obvious you don't want your headboard to look weird so pull 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 stretch out and make sure it's as smooth as possible and on the corners try to make um try to fold neatly you can cut out any excess fabric on the corners but you have to be very careful when doing that so finally for the nail heads or decorative nails as some people call it i marked one inch spacings and i just used a mallet to um put them in they weren't looking perfect but they're perfect for a five-year-old in my opinion so um there are tools that i that could be used for this as as well i found one on amazon it didn't come the day i needed it so i ended up just using my good old hands Here's the finished look, let me know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe.